Welcome to the secret stash. That's super secret. And this is the only show that tracks down the local people behind the places and things we love. I'm going to kick it off with my favorite thing ever. Then goes deep to reveal the best kept secrets behind them all. Why are we talking to people? Let them know. Shout out the rooftops. This is great. And leave you with a stash of stories and offers you'll only find here. Jackpot. Now, here's your host, Jesse Ibanez. Secret Agent Man. Secret Agent Man. They've given you a number and taken away your name. All right, what's happening, gang? You in the stash, baby. What's the stash? Well, we got some cool local people doing some cool local things. And uh, I'm flanked today by somebody who I'm actually going to tease his intro a little bit. And I'm going to pose this instead as a two flanked question. Number one, are you in front of a computer? Forward stroke. Do you have a smartphone? Because if you do, you're going to want to uh, follow us on Twitter at actually at follow the stash. S-T-A-S-H. Uh, and tweet in some some questions for this guy. If you are a renter, dude, I'm calling you out right now, okay? If you make more than $42,000 a year in household income, dude, I'm calling you out right now. And if you've got more than 7,500 large in the bank, then dude, I'm calling you out right now. Why? Because today is a show about firing your landlord. And I told you I was going to tease the, the, the guru across the table from me right now because this is a dude who knows first-time buyers better than anybody. So in the stash, we like talking about some cool local peeps. Dave Hewson from the Greenhouse Group. Bro, you're a pretty cool local peep doing some cool local things. Happy to have you on the show, man. Thank you for having me. That's right. It's great to be here. Hey, let me be the first to say happy birthday. Well, thank you, man. Yeah, I'm hanging out with you guys. That's how much I care about you guys right now. <laughs> I'm hanging out with you on my birthday. How about that? Right? <laughs> now so, that we're on the air, is this the time to use the bathroom? Well, you could just go. It's like Dumb and okay. Dumber, man. Just okay. go. Okay, it actually cool. warms the show up a little bit, if you know what I mean. All right, good. Just make sure you stay on that <laughs> side of the table. Dave. What you have committed yourself to professionally, and I'll even venture to say personally, we're not going to get into that today, is help shepherding that conversation of folks that are surrounding us right now by the thousands who have not made that leap from deciding to put some roots down. You know, there's all kinds of different reasons why you become a honer, but even if it's just a simple numbers game, right? And you've watched that evolution and you've watched in different micro markets. You've watched at different price points. You've watched at different mortgage micro markets. Dude, is this not now the most ridiculous time to finally light a spark and fire under the you know where and, and finally get your name on something? Yeah, we are currently at, you know, interest rates that are as low as they've been since the spring of 2013, which was their bottom. And we see... You know, I or I see personally a lot of people who don't think they can afford to buy a home in a place like San Diego because they just assume it's too expensive. Because they get they see the headlines on the news are like, dude, San Diego, one of the most expensive cities, right? But we're going to talk about today how that might be true, but dude, not necessarily. Like, there's still a ton of properties for sale, incredibly affordable. And it's one of my favorite things to do is hand the keys to a first time home buyer. Yeah, because they were a lot of times people that we had to convert. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and guess what, my man? I got you locked and loaded in that chair over there because for the next uh, 60 minutes, actually, I, I lied, in the next 54 and a half minutes, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the thing that you've done brilliantly over the last 10 to 15 years. I don't know how long you've been doing this class, but you basically give away a free home buyer class and you educate people. It's one of your main gifts, you might say, or passions is selflessly giving yourself away in a philanthropic capacity, helping someone get from where they are to where they want to be. And you do that through that module of the free first time home buyer cost. By the way, I mentioned the Twitter handle. Also, write this down. It's actually it's free home buyer class dot webs w e b s dot com. Right? There's a little form on there, a quick little primer. I think you even have a couple testimonials of some folks that have gone through the class to get your name on Dave's next class. He does them every Wednesday. Usually about what, six at night? Six o'clock. Yeah, six o'clock at night. It doesn't take more than what? Sixty, ninety minutes, right? 
60 minutes. 60 minutes. And if you got some questions, you'll probably stay a little late. I know you always do that. But you've got to check this out because I'm not even going to tease it anymore. So basically, we've broken down his entire class into four parts, okay? Credit, the local market, and then money, right? How much uh, money do I need? How much money do I have to make? And then finally, exactly how to get started. And that last one's a bit of a teaser because it may not be the answer that you think it is. Hmm. But Dave... Can I get started on this? I want to start picking your brain right away. Sure. So so let's talk credit, man. And now, you know, nothing happens. Well, I should say nothing good happens before credit, right? I mean, it literally is. Cost of borrowing is directly proportional to being able to gain your net worth through real estate quickly. Is it not? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, in general, uh, the higher the credit score, the lower the cost of borrowing and vice versa. So... Getting that credit score, you know, we're all given credit basically at birth. And the only way you can, the only thing you can do with your credit is actually make it worse. <laughs> so we're all 840s out of the gate? Exactly. Yeah. So it, it's, it's you guard your credit score with your life. Yeah. Yeah. But what's also true though is don't live under a rock because you got to have credit to get credit. Right? You can't just wake up one day and go buy a house and be like, I'm good. I never did anything wrong because you have to also prove that you've done some things right. That is true. You do need to establish a credit history. Uh, lenders are going to look for, uh, well, the actual credit scoring model is to look for a 30-year history. Now, most people are not even old enough to have a 30-year history. Especially the folks you meet with. Right. So what are some good ways to get started? Well, you know, revolving debt is, of course, the quickest and easiest way to uh, establish some credit. And revolving debt is what? That's like credit card stuff, right? Exactly. So you're like hanging around in college campus. I remember it was the first credit card I got. They came running around. Hey, you want this free T-shirt? You know, and you sign yeah. down. Little, you know, you have a credit card and you got to take care of it. Yeah. That's a revolving debt. And we only need 12 months worth of credit history to uh, seriously look at qualifying for a home loan. Yeah. Good. So let's break it down a little bit. Now, we're not going to, this isn't going to be a comprehensive class, right? You already heard earlier, it takes an entirety of a 60 minutes. Now, we have 60 minutes, but we're going to hit four of them. And so I'll say these are your most, infor most important, most critical four. And if you're catching us online right now, go ahead and feel comfortable tweeting any question you might have about this for myself or Dave at follow the stash uh, on Twitter. Now, first, I got to know, people are scared to death of their FICO score, right? So so let's say that you didn't do too bad or you didn't, you just, you are where you are. That's where you are. That's where you start. Now, how fastly can your credit score deteriorate? Well, the number one thing that can hurt your credit is late payments. And late payments are broken down into 30-day increments, 30, 60, 90. Once you get above 120, the damage has been done. It's not going to do any more damage. So the best way to improve your credit is simply to just make your payments on time. Mm. And uh, if let's say you've already been deteriorating your credit for a little bit, what's the number one way to improve your credit? Because if it it can it can go up as fast as it as it can come down, right? It, it, it it'll be it'll take a little bit more effort to get it to go up, and it, you can definitely hurt it quicker than you can help it. And that's true. Fair enough. Because what is a FICO score? I've been told that a FICO score is colon the probability that you're going to make a 30 day payment in the next 30 days, or in this case, miss one, really it's a risk averse tolerance scale. So if they see some trouble on the horizon, they're going to cut you off quick, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think the number one uh, question I get if from anybody is uh, what do credit inquiries do to my credit? Ooh, good one. Meaning uh, everybody says, don't pull my credit, don't pull my credit because I don't want my credit score to go down. Yeah, the fact to act, right? Right. So if you're applying for credit, whether it's a home loan, credit card, or, or a car loan, uh, you need to have your credit pulled. So there's no way around that. Mm -hmm. What you want to avoid is are the multiple inquiries from multiple different industries. Right. And for example? In a short period of time. Right. So like you're going to go, you talk to you, you're thinking about getting a home loan, and all of a sudden you just decide to whimsically that night run over and apply for a boat. To get like some boat financing. Or you run over to the, you know, furniture store to- the Furniture uh, store. To look at uh, furnishing this home you don't even own yet. Right, exactly. Right. That's right. when they're like, whoa, 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 dude, this guy's a red flag, <laughs> right? He's going to try to borrow the moon right now. 
Understood, right. But if you're just trying to shop around, like you're trying to get a mortgage, and maybe you get a poll a couple different times, two, three's a safe kind of number, isn't it? You should be able to know where you stand by about three. Well, they give you a, a certain amount of time. So if you pull have your credit pulled today here on February 17th, you have until March 17th. Okay. So as long as you're having your credit pulled within the same industry, and this is important because it's a mortgage inquiry is not the same as a say a car loan. Ah, good point. Yeah. What's that? So you want to have, if you're applying for a mortgage, it's best to have your credit pulled by a mortgage professional, somebody in the lending world. And then in theory, you're supposed to be able to have your credit pulled every single day for a month without your score going down, as long as those other inquiries are in the same industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because a lot of people are watching the commercial break during their favorite show and they see like, you know, one of the several different kind of free online credit, things or whatever. And then they go, and then the two misnomers in that is, number one, they usually only get one bureau. Right? I'd love to see you expound on that in a second. And then secondly, that's your revolving score that they're checking. It's not your mortgage score. So people always say there's, 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 there's three different types of scores. And people think, oh, yeah, yeah, I know, there's three bureaus. Well, no, you you want all three. Why? Because they're going to take the take the middle. They're going to the take two. the middle of or, the of the three, right? The three, yeah. But then the second thing is, they think, oh, that's my score. You could have a totally different view from a um, a risk perspective on a, t- going to get a mortgage versus just going to get a ten thousand dollar credit card. Correct? Absolutely. So yeah. say more about that. Well, I run into this all the time. People bring me their credit report, right? And then I pull their credit, and it's different. And both of us are looking at each other going, you know, understanding why. And it's because each industry has their own algorithm that they'd right. use to determine right. what their credit score, what that means to their, right. what they're trying to borrow. And usually it means lower, right? Because a lot of your first time home buyers, they might have actually built up a little bit of a little bit of clout, a little bit of fodder in like the revolving world. Because maybe they had a couple of cards, they paid them off as agreed, but they've taken no big risks. They haven't bought a car. They haven't bought anything with installment. And then the mortgage is like, oh, hold on a second. This guy might be a little bit more, right? And so the score usually you see go down. Right. I, I find that some of the consumer uh, websites that offer the free reports yeah. tend to be a little more consumer friendly. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Imagine that. <laughs> right. Yeah. So uh, it's a little bit of a reality check once I pull somebody's credit. Good, good. So, so. We talked about how quickly your credit can deteriorate. Obviously, make your payments on time, right? The ones that you got, otherwise the, you're going to feel the floor fall out from underneath you because they're going to be like, whoa, 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 hold on. This guy is a much higher risk of not making his next payment. So boom. Second thing is there's three scores, not just three bureaus. So there's three bureaus. You're going to want all three because you're going to take the, the, middle, of the, the middle of the three. That's, That's their right. quote unquote credit score. And then there's also three different Score. So you got to make sure you got to know that if you're trying to get a mortgage, you got to go to Dave and have him pull a mortgage score. Right. You're not going to get a mortgage score from the online free profile, right? So, so talk to me about numbers. So let's say I go and I pull it with you, and and I'm at like a 600. Where do I live inside of that family of numbers, and is that high enough to be able to get a, a mortgage through you? Uh, the short answer is yes. The 600 is a high enough score. Um, currently mortgage credit score, uh, have run in 20 point increments. So it okay. starts at 580, 600, 620, and goes all the way up to 740. So meaning, cause it goes lower than 580. I know because I started with a 510 first time I ever <laughs> pulled my credit. You have to try to get a 510. Adrian, you might be the only one who's got a worse credit score than 510 that I know. I I and he nodded his head. Yes. Like so, so, so 580, that's as low as you can go. And even at 580, 600, we might want to first look at some credit improvement before we actually get serious about pre, pre-approving you for a mortgage. No question, man. And, you know, I'll even leave that as a little tease uh, as we wrap up our first little chunk of time here, Dave, because I know that that's one of the things that I'm, I'm most confident of referring folks to you because – you not only do this class for free, but you also actually run them through a little mini credit repair, like uh, like product almost, but you do it for free. You go to somebody who specializes, they're going to charge you hundreds of dollars to help you repair their credit. You you know that there's a couple low-hanging fruits, a couple quick tips and tricks that usually helps most people. And I can attest that I use Dave's um, 
uh, uh, little uh, trip, tricks and tips the first time I went to buy my house. I went from a 510 up to a 680 in a remarkably short amount of time. So it is possible. That is true. Yes. Coming up, we're going to talk about the local market. And, you know, it's interesting because the amount of homes that are available for $250,000 and below and how much money you need to be able to purchase that might just knock you off your stool. So you're hanging out in the stash, baby. I got David Hewson, mortgage planner, first time buyer extraordinaire, and we'll be right back. Be sure to follow the show on Facebook at Jesse's Secret Stash and on Twitter at Follow the Stash. So blame it on the night. Put your hands in the air. You are listening to The Secret Stash with host Jesse Ibanez on ESPN Radio 1700. Hey, what's happening, gang? You in the stash. We got your lunch hour. We got some cool local people doing some cool local things in the stash. And uh, today, I'm flanked by my man, David Hewson. He is a first-time home buyer expert. He's a mortgage planner, and he works at the Greenhouse Group. And uh, what we're doing today is we're breaking down his free home buyer class, which, by the way, you can get at, at free home buyer class dot webs webs dot com sign up for i think it's every wednesday at 6 p.m he does it right there in his uh greenhouse group headquarters we're breaking down the the four most elemental fundamental things that he talks about and gives little teasers and primers so that you can find yourself in this conversation if you're renting right now man i can't implore you enough i have never seen the relationship the threshold you might say be so low to get into your first home than what it is right now so first uh, clip we talked about credit and uh, you're welcome to tweet in any questions you got for myself or Dave at follow the stash dot I'm sorry follow the stash at Twitter and uh, my man Adrian producer will read them live to us and we'll try to get them all uh, uh, answered Dave let's talk about local market okay yep. now what's going on with the inventory right now well it's getting better and that is um, always good for buyers uh, what we're seeing is Sellers are more willing to negotiate on terms going into contract, which also it can only benefit buyers from both um, the purchase contract terms to the financing terms. Mm. Good. Yeah. And which is interesting because inside the vacuum of the fact that this has been a dominant, a seller dominant market now for God about as long as I can recall. I mean, I got to think back to like when we just came out of the bust and they were throwing around all those tax credits and stuff like that. I, I can recall, man, that was about the last time that I firmly felt the pendulum was over towards the buyers and inventory being so low in, in a lot of the hot markets, there's more buyers than there are sellers, but it's finally starting to repair itself. Um, for example, uh, right now, I think there's about 11, a little more than 11,000 homes for sale in San Diego County. And that's up because just a little while ago, we were under 10. It was like between eight and nine oscillating around right there for the holidays. So with the spring is starting to kind of, you know, uh, reinvigorate the market a little bit and it's happening earlier this year. Have you, are you noticing that as well? I noticed we didn't have a winner. We really didn't right <laughs> in more ways than one hasn't quite rained that much either. Right. Yeah. So, so would you say that inventory is getting a little better, but it's still largely seller driven. It is, yes. Multiple offers, yeah, that whole yeah. thing. You're going to be, you know, it's it's not uncommon to be in a slugfest out there as a buyer. Right. So so why why wouldn't they just put their gloves up and say, "You know what? I don't want, I don't want to be part of a bidding war. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to stop. I'm just going to I'll wait for things to to figure themselves out." Why would that be ah maybe not their best option? Well, uh first thing that comes to mind is anybody that's renting right now is seeing the the rents are always going up, especially and, right now, and especially right now. And when I mean right now, I mean that within the last you know six to eight weeks, we've seen uh, people's purchase power um, grow to the same limits that we saw, which was the best in the spring of 2013. Mm -hmm. So it as a buyer, yeah, you could argue this is it's never been better. Yeah, and, and we're going to get to more of the math on that a little bit. And you're not going to want to miss. 
our, our next segment when we talk about money. But let's let's get through a couple more important things first. So we're talking about the local market. So that's the inventory. What about the loan market? Like, what about the loan availability? Like, are banks lending money right now, and how aggressively? Right. So that's a good that's a good point because. What we saw in the summer of 2013 is we saw rates actually go up. You know, they've been predicting it for years, and they, it didn't happen every year. And it finally did. Mm. And the ripple effect through the lending world meant that, of course, the first thing to go are refinances. Right. So banks are only interested in one thing, and that is lending money. To they, people that are going to pay them back. <laughs> right, so, right. Yeah. <laughs> On time. Yeah. So what that means is, Lending volume is way down. Mm. So banks don't care if they're lending money for per- purchases or refinances. They just want to lend money. So right. they are looking for any way to get that volume back up. And these, you know, they make small enhancements here and there, but you uh, you accumulate enough of those enhancements and we finally have a more favorable lending environment. Now, a lot of people are still claiming it's not very friendly and they're, 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 they're right about it. Those are the same people that walked back and forth to school in six feet of snow, though. I mean, come on. It's never been this friendly for for a while. Yeah. it's When we're talking about the minimum down payments and what that minimum income requirement is, uh, it hasn't been better. I can't wait to talk about that. I was blown away by some of the math you were sharing with me, too. I mean, it's crazy. Anyway, back on track here. So, so. What about distressed properties? Come on, everybody wants a deal, right? And we know there's been a lot of those over the course of the last few years with the foreclosure crisis, and then there was the short sale stuff. And so so what's going on with the distressed properties right now? Well, we've seen a lot of them get cycled through. Right. That was huge back in 2011, 2012, and the first part of 2013. And it seems like a lot of the distressed properties have been have now been bought and sold and I think they said it was locally anyway. We're back to sort of pre-bus numbers. Yeah, and you know, it, I think 2012. That's all we did were distressed properties. No lie. And then now we're back to certainly doing overwhelming majority is conventional sales. Yeah. Now distress, traditional sales. Traditional yeah. sales. Yeah. Uh, the distressed properties are still out there, but they're few and far between. And I would even venture that when they do come up, you know, the poor starving sharks that are swimming circles inside of a 60 foot gallon fish tank. Now, you know, it's like when one pops up, they're like, ah, and they, they try to, they all cash sharks, try to go gobble it up, which makes your kind of client, the first time home buyer, a little challenged, right? Because when it's a distressed sale, they, they typically want to defer to the best terms available. Even if it means taking a smidgen less money, do they not? Uh, Yeah. There's always a cash discount. Yeah. The cash discount. You betcha. We see that, uh, distressed properties, you know, a lot of times they're not even financeable mm-hmm. because right. the banks who want to get rid of these homes, if it's a full foreclosure on a home, um, are the same banks that won't lend money to somebody to buy it because it has to be essentially move in ready. Yeah. And they can't be like floors missing or no. holes in the wall, which a lot of course is, you know, which a lot of those end up being. So last on my, my, my list of questions I want to ask you, uh, how do you know when the right time is to buy? Like we're throwing around these numbers about being a renter right now. And trust me, if you are a renter, please do yourself a favor. Come back around after this break and we're going to talk about some numbers. But before we go, is there a macro part of this or is it all just individual? Well, it's both. Macro is what are the what is the market telling you? In general, what are the numbers telling you? Uh, what is uh, what are home prices? Mm-hmm. What are interest rates? Mm-hmm. That's the macro. That applies to all of us. And we've been saying now that it's probably never been arguably better since you've right. seen it in recent time. Okay, so we got the macro. What about the individual part? Well, that question is, is it right for for you at this time? Because it's not necessarily when you buy, it's, it's how long you own. Mm. So Interesting. When is it the best time for you to buy? Because regardless of what the market is doing, there is a very personal and individual decision to be made about home ownership. Right, like growing family, needs for space, school districts. Help me out here. You're talking yeah, about you, that stuff, right? Yeah. Are you planning to stay in the area? Right, right, right. So that's what you're saying is that's sort of a panacea against potentially the the big fear of, oh, God, did I buy at the wrong time? Was there a little market cyclic element? And I was kind of about, you're saying, look, if, you're, if your goal is to flip it in six months- this you is, know, or maybe two to three years even. Okay, right. that's a conversation you'd have with Dave. But as long as you're making this an actual purchase on the right 
you know, for the right reasons, the timing thing almost becomes a little less important. Is that kind of your point? Exactly. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, listen, man, coming up, I've been teasing this long enough, but we are going to get elbow deep in the numbers and you are not going to believe the amount of inventory that's available out there for under $250,000 and how much money you need to make to be able to get your name on one. We're hanging out in the stash with my man David Hewson, first time buyer, extraordinaire mortgage planner, and the proctor of the free uh, homebuyerclass.webs.com. We'll be right back. If you missed any of the show, check out the podcast at secretstashradio.com. You are listening to The Secret Stash with host Jesse Ibanez on ESPN Radio 1700. What's happening, gang? You are live in The Stash. And we talk in first-time home buyers today with a guru in the first-time home buyer game, David Houston, mortgage planner, proctor of the of San Diego's soon-to-be most popular first-time home buyer class, which you can sign up for yourself at freehomebuyerclass.webs.com. And also, if they want to learn more about that, you, you got a free recorded message set up too, don't you? That's right. And that number is is toll free eight 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 four eight four thirty six. 57, I think, right? That's 888-484-3657. And the extension you have set up is 619. That's right. You can remember that because you're, right, 619 area code, right? That's right. Clever little son of a gun, you. I grew up in the 619. The 619? Does that mean like you, you got you got to say it like that? <laughs> That's how we say it now, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> Not when you were a kid, though. Right. Then you would have gotten balls thrown at you or something, <laughs> right. right? Okay, cool. So we started off the show talking about credit. Because nothing happens before credit, right? Gave you four quick hitters on that. And we talked about the local market. So where is the credit meeting the real world? And that's, of course, you know, available homes out there and then also available money to be able to borrow. And now we're getting to the good stuff. So let's get, I want to get right into this. So Dave shared with me some of the math and the numbers and the research he did. I wanted to know, and I asked him, I challenged him, I said, hey, Dave. Listen, if you're a renter out there, let's not go for the moon. I think average home prices in the four, five hundred thousand, somewhere right there. Let's okay. just let's drop it down. Let's say two hundred and fifty grand. Okay. I did the research and I found out there's three thousand five hundred and forty six homes that are for sale in San Diego County at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or less. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm surprised to hear that number too. Because you think about it, there's only 11,000 someone. That's 32% of the inventory in San Diego County for sale available for two. So there's there's plenty of homes. So you can't tell me that, oh, there's nothing for 250. There totally is. So what's the lowest down payment I've got to have to be able to get my name on one of those? Uh, 3% down, which is 7,500. Okay, so all I got to do is have 3% down. The bank will give me the rest. And that comes out to 7,500 bucks. That's right. Dude. Damn! <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, that's uh it's a and that's not a stretch. That's not a special program. That's not for a particular borrower. That's anybody can apply for that. $7500. Man. So let's play around with this a little bit. So let's say Let's say I could qualify for a little bit more than that, okay? Let's say I want to get myself up to the $400,000 range. Does anything change, or is it literally just, I got to have that much more money? Like, as you go up in loan amount, are there, are there, are there requirements get harder, et cetera? They eventually do, but there's there's quite a bit of room there. So we're gonna we're talking about the same uh, guidelines all the way up to four hundred seventeen thousand. Ah, okay, amount. got it. So basically, that kind of that's true up to four seventeen. Right. So I can kind of have that be like a sliding scale on the abacus there. That's right. But at two fifty, all I need is seventy five hundred down, and a yearly income. Yeah. Right. Oh, good. Yeah. Right. So that's the other side. So you got the down. Let's say you got seventy five hundred in the bank. Now what? Well, the annual income needed to qualify for that, assuming there are no other. Uh, household debts, meaning uh, finance debts, right? Things that would show up on a credit report. Your income would need to be forty-two thousand a year. So for so it, my household income, so if my household income is forty-two thousand dollars a year, I can get my name 
on a two hundred fifty thousand dollar home. Yes. Which, by the way, represents thirty two percent of the real estate market. Yeah. That's insane, dude. Right. I, I I deal with these numbers every day, and I'm I still think it's insane. Right. So now I could be off for a couple years on this, but I could have recalled the last time I looked, the median household income in San Diego County was what? Wasn't it like 62 or something like that? 63, right around there. Right around there. Okay. Okay. So, so you're saying, so for the average person, let's do the math backwards now. So, so let's say you're the average person. Let's say your average income is about 62,000 bucks. What, like what, what can I get my name on potentially using that same math? So assuming again, uh, we don't have any other finance debt. Right. You're looking at a purchase price of about three twenty five to three forty. Okay, got it. So it's almost like two thirds, so about one third more bolster on that. That puts us up to almost three and a half. That's right. Damn. So that's based on the the median income that we find here in San Diego. If you have uh it's not uncommon for um to see a, a household that's making, you know, well above that. So I meet people every day who make well in in excess of these amounts that we're talking about and still don't know that they can buy a home in San Diego. I'm not surprised to hear that, man. You know, people are, uh, st- they allow themselves to be stunted by hearsay. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Right. And like I, we said earlier, in an earlier segment, like that, that, that stat gets thrown around on Facebook or wherever you're finding it saying, oh, you know, we're the second most expensive in the, in the, in the country, which, hey, I guess that's true. But how crazy is it to juxtapose that and say that there is a, an enormous opportunity and all you got to do is have a household income of $42,000 per year, have good credit. And we talked about that and you've already got their backs on that because you got that credit thing you do for them for mm-hmm. free. They come to your class, they get signed up for that credit. In what? A couple months, the average person can have a nice little boon on their credit score just by looking at it. And all you need is a 580 to do a deal in the first place. How low could this bar be to get into your first home? <laughs> well, what it means is that there are a lot of people out there who qualify who don't know they qualify. So it is a matter of taking a look, and it doesn't cost you anything but your time to do it. Yeah, shining a light on it, right? right? And what you focus on always tends to increase. So you know, even if you are in that bucket, it sounds like the next best option, if option number one ideally would be, hey, you go and get your name on something right away because you heard this show, you went to Dave's class, you figured it out for yourself. But what's the next worst case scenario? Oh, you come up with a plan and it takes you a couple months of some hard work and you get yourself fixed back up and then you can reintroduce yourself into that conversation. Let's let's flip it on its head a little bit though. So what's occurring for me right now is maybe people don't have that context. Everybody though listening who's a renter knows how much they pay for rent. Yep. Right, Adrian, you just moved this weekend, right? So you know exactly how much you're paying for rent. Everybody has that number memorized. So if you were going to go backwards, like what would that be the equivalent of in rent? So 250 with the minimum 3% down, yeah. you're looking at a total house payment of 1850 a month. Okay. okay now that's and that's including taxes and insurance and and I'm even including an HOA payment in there because oh, I wow. because I realized that that's a you know, our entry level property type here in San Diego is a condo. Right. So every condo, there's an unavoidable fact that you're going to be paying HOA dues. So I'm right. even factoring in $300 a month for HOA. Wow. Dues. That's even with 300 bucks a month HOAs. Right. And there's a lot of HOAs out there that are sometimes 250 or even 200 a month. Correct. Yeah. So, you know, once you do the math on the net payment compared to what you're paying in rent, and when I say net payment, I mean the net payment after the property tax deduction. Okay, good. Assuming some things, right? Because you're not a tax guy, but... Right. Then you're looking at more like a payment of $1,575 a month. Wow. So if I'm hearing you correctly right now, if you're paying more than $1,575 in rent right now, what would be a two-bedroom... I mean, uh, a $250,000 home, excuse me, is probably the equivalent of about what? Of a two-bedroom condo, right? Yeah. Let's just make that assumption. Mm-hmm. Depending, of course, on the area. Some areas, that's not going to get you anything. That sounds about right. Some could maybe even get you even more if you're a little bit further east. But So if you're paying more than fifteen seventy five in rent right now and on a two-bedroom, you have got to take a look at this, do you not? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and like I said, it will only provide some clarity for you about where you stand. And as you mentioned earlier, Many people we we meet at the home buyer class aren't ready to buy right away. Maybe it's due to credit. Maybe it's due to needing to so eliminate some other debts. Or maybe they're just a year out. 
they're just a year out. And but what happens is, what we know for sure is that year is going to happen anyway, right? right? Might as well get to the end of that year, have that plan in place so that when you arrive twelve months later, you're in the best position possible and you hit the ground running as opposed to starting the heavy lifting at that point. And if that message is finding you right now, Dave. How can they get their name reserved for your next home buyer class? Visit the website, freehomebuyerclass.webs, W E B S dot com. Uh, we have the class every Wednesday at 6 p.m. We used to do it on a larger scale and advertise and get a bunch of people in a room a few times a year. And what we found was uh, we had a room full of people with a ton of questions that we never got to. And we had a lot of people leaving, uh, well, I guess a little dissatisfied because they didn't leave with the clarity that we promised mm. them when they showed up. So we scaled it way down. Mm. We do it every week. Yeah. We keep it small and we uh, get everybody's attention uh, or we get everybody's questions asked by the time we're done. I love that thought. And coming up, the final piece of this puzzle, how in the world you could get started. And it might not be where you think. We're in the stash with my man David Houston, first time buyer expert, and we'll be right back. If you missed any of the show, check out the podcast at secretstashradio.com. Welcome back to the Secret Stash with host Jesse Ibanez on ESPN Radio 1700. Hey, welcome back. You in the stash, and we got your back renters of San Diego with your rents raising, right? This is the one about firing your landlord and getting your name on something before this little blip on the radar, this little epoch uh, of man time becomes a history. And that is how to get your name on something and make it super duper cheap. I'm flanked by my man, David Houston. And uh, we spent the last hour talking about credit. We talking about credit. We talking about credit. (laughs) The local market, how much money I need, like as a down payment, and how much money do I got to make? And if you missed that, you got to check the rebroadcast on YouTube because that is crazy, some of the numbers you put together. But then lastly, how in the world do you get started, Dave? So I would imagine there'd be two prongs to this, right? There'd be the, the mortgage part and then there'd be the real estate part. So, so let, talk to me first. Is it just as easy as getting a pre-qual? Well, that's the starting point. What you want to do, in my opinion, is, is get the financing in order first before you ever get out there and look. Now, it's a little hard to do with everything being online these days, you know, every home search is going to start there and it's just too easy to access it. But get that pre-qualification started, see a mortgage planner first, and then once you figure out your purchase power, then you can start your home search. Because? Because it's a, it's a universal law that if you don't see a, a mortgage planner first, you're setting yourself up for some disappointment. Because you're going to get ruined yourself, right? Because <laughs> everybody's going to be looking around you know, on the fancy websites out there on stuff outside of your price point. Then you're going to get the doomsday anvil dropped on your big toe that you're down in that. Right. I get it. Makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, everybody's going to start by looking online. That's just the way. It's like going to the mall. You're going right. to start by window shopping. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you've made the decision that this is a even simplest iota of something that you want to try to accomplish... Get yourself in touch with Dave Houston, mortgage planner, greenhouse group. And you know what? I'd even recommend go to his class where basically he takes everything we've talked about today, but goes into detail and be able to answer any questions you might have specifically about your situation. I guess ones that you'd feel comfortable asking in a small group format to make sure that you can get the clarity for yourself. Right. So in order to do that, Dave, they go to free homebuyerclass.webs.com or or they can they can talk, they can call that that uh, free recorded message that you got right. I think that's eight 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 four eight four thirty six fifty seven. Again, that's eight 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 four eight four thirty eight fifty seven extension six one nine. Right, like the area code, yep. baby. Good, so good. So in that concept of what you do is called a mortgage plan, not just some online thing that you put in a couple numbers and you get something printed out. Right? Why is that so valuable? Well, the mortgage plan is a starting point. The pre-approval is what comes next. Mm. Pre-qualification is basically is is four basic questions. What do you make? What do you owe? What do you have? Mm. What does your credit look like? Yeah. Based on the answers of those four questions, you'll get a purchase power. Yeah. But what you need to do is move on to step two, which is get that pre-approval because that is an actual loan commitment from a lender based on your credit and financial profile. And you can't go shopping 
and get the respect that your potential offer deserves if you've just got a qual. Right. right? You got to have the pre-approval. Love that thought. And that's another good point, too. So as much as there's wisdom and not running around with a pre-qual trying to get offers in, same thing goes for real estate. Don't be one of those guys or girls that is looking around on Zillow or, you know, any truly uh, or, or Craigslist even for that matter, and then calls up their first agent for the first time wanting to go show them a home. There's guys out there that'll do that. Trust me. Right. It's a terrible way of approaching that. It's the equivalent of, of imagining that you're going to actually try to buy the product before you ever try it on. There's so much more that goes into that conversation, the least of which is whether that person that shows up at the house is someone you even want to work with, right? So that's a traditional agent, and there's plenty of them out there, but you got to go, you know, do your due diligence. Go online, check out Yelp. There's a lot of uh, great uh, five-star review agents out there, other people sharing with them what it's like to work with people, and then and then do your due diligence just like for mortgage plan and figuring out who the right agent's going to be. Go and invest the time for a sit-down or a huddle-up, like we call it, 90 minutes, where we actually sit inside that space and figure out you know, what you're after, where you're after it, how in the world this process, process works, why in the world you're doing this in the first place, and then the least of which is whether it were a good fit to even get it done. Am I right? That's absolutely right. You, That's you it, captured my man. it well. Yeah. So there you have it. And so I'm imagining if this message is finding you right now and you are a renter and you potentially make a household income of forty two thousand dollars or more, which is well below the uh the 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 average median home uh income for uh for San Diego County and You've got less than 10 grand in the bank, even 7,500. You could get your name on at least 32% of the available inventory out there for $250,000 or less. But don't do it without talking to Dave first. Dave Hewson, thank you for coming in, my man. Thank you for having me. And great. one one last time on that, you got to go to freehomebuyerclass.webs.com. He does it every Wednesday night right in the heart of San Diego. You're not going to want to miss that. Dave, I appreciate you coming in, my man. Thank you for having me. Sharing your wisdom. And as for you, I appreciate you hanging out. This was uh, The Secret Stash. We'll be back here next Tuesday at noon with some cool local peeps doing some cool local things. We'll talk to you then. Thanks for listening to The Secret Stash. If you missed any of the show, check out the podcast at secretstashradio.com. And we'll be back next Tuesday at noon right here on ESPN Radio 1700.